We have now come to the last session of the day. This session is equally important. Deals with the age of juvenility. Covers various important aspects. Inquiry process for age determination. Evidentiary proof and the challenges that we face in this particular context. And to deal with this particular important topic, we have with us this afternoon a very competent officer, a rare mix of academics, of a lawyer, and a judge, Dr. Sukhna Pritham. A great pleasure in introducing her. After doing her graduation in law, she did masters in constitutional law and thereafter doctorate in human rights and the emerging issues relating to them. After that, she had a short stint as a lawyer argued some cases on behalf of the state of Haryana in the top court of the country, the Supreme Court. It was in the year 2011 that she was selected into the Haryana Judicial Service and she has now to her credit 10 years of judicial service as such. Presently, she is the Chief Judicial Magistrate Ambala. So far as the question relating to Juvenile Justice Act is concerned, she has authored a book in this particular field as such. And that's the reason that I say she is a real mix academics, professional experience, and judicial experience as such. And therefore, with this kind of a background, besides that, she had many other challenging, responsible positions during this particular short stint of 10 years as a judicial officer. She was the deputy registrar with the National Green Tribunal and also looked after the other four benches of the Green Tribunal as such. As principal magistrate, she did what was required to be done in the context of the Juvenile Justice Act as such. Therefore, I present to you an experienced officer who would be dealing with this particular subject. I'm very happy to present to you, Dr. Supla Pritam. Thank you, sir. Namaskar and good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Balram Gupta for such kind words. And it's an honor to be introduced by a person who is an institution in himself. Thank you so very much, sir. Well, I would thank Chandigarh Judicial Academy for giving me this opportunity to take up the issue of juvenility with all my worthy fellow colleagues, my seniors and other stakeholders today. Well, no civilized society regards children as accountable for their action to the same extent as adults. The wisdom of protecting young children against the full rigor of the law is beyond argument. The difficulty lies in determining when and under what circumstances should it be removed. These are the words from Professor Colin Howard, and it explains the issue of juvenility very well. Well, in today's workshop, we'll be discussing the law about juvenility. And uh, first of all, 
Second, uh, in fact, secondly, I would like to thank uh, everybody who's present here, especially Honorable Justice Mercy, who's been uh, here all through the day and has been a motivating force behind all of us and which has maintained our rigor uh, for the entire day. Thank you, Lordship. Well, coming back to the topic, I would like to take up the Nirbhya case first. Well, when Nirbhya came with the new act came after Nirbhya, and the issue of juvenility became all the more important. 16 to 18 all of a sudden become, became a phenomena and defense trying to use it as a weapon. Well, we would be focusing, as mentioned by Dr. Gupta, on three aspects pertaining to the issue. First is inquiry process for age determination. Secondly, evidentiary proof. Third, the challenges we face in day-to-day -day proceedings. Well, despite the elaborate international and national framework that exists for juvenile justice, the fact remains that there is a big gap between theory and the practice on the ground. The very basic issue of age determination and claiming of juvenility still stand unsorted on various fronts. Courts are faced with the issue of claiming juvenility time and again, irrespective of the law in place. Before moving further, let's have a quick reality check. Well, not only are there millions of children around the world suffering or at risk, the real number is uncertain due to the fact that there is no uniform rule of law or its applicability to determine juvenility. Although it has been more than a decade since the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, 1989, came into force, still the administration of juvenile justice around the world is far from satisfactory. Let's quickly go through some of the issues being faced. Issue of detention is one. Issue of claim of juvenility is second, which are, we are going to take up today. Issue of assessment of age, which is part of the claim of juvenility. Issue of maltreatment, exploitation and violence. Issues related to conditions of children homes, which Dr. K.P. Singh took uh, right uh, in uh, the session earlier. Issue of disproportionate punishment, issue of rehabilitation, which, was, which has also been taken up in earlier sessions today. Let's come to the topic for, the, for this session, claim of juvenility. Who's a child? Child means a person who has not completed 18 years of age. Child in conflict with law means a child who is alleged or found to have committed an offense and who has not completed 18 years of age on the date of commission of such offense. So the entire story revolves around completing 18 years of age. Well, claim of juvenility refers to the plea raised by the offender at any point of time, claiming to be less than 18 years of age as on date of commission of the crime, as I just mentioned. Well, it is undisputed that such claim can be raised during and even after the conclusion of the trial. The Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 governs the scenario at present. Well, before moving on to the provisions, let me tell you some important facts. The issue of juvenility has been raised on a number of occasions before the various high courts and apex court of the nation. We'll be discussing that. Juvenility claimed at any stage needs to be addressed by the court without fail, leaving no choice to the court even if it is found to be false later. A finding to that effect is bound to be given especially when it, whenever it is under dispute. Well, under the Act of 2015, determination of age is governed by Section 9 and Section 94 of this Act. Let's go to Section 9 first. Section 9 talks about two scenarios. First, when a person is produced before a magistrate and it feels the person is of tender age. So it is the magistrate's discretion. Second, when a person claims to be a juvenile before a court or court itself is of such opinion. Well, let's discuss the first scenario. When a magistrate not empowered to exercise the powers of the board under this act is of the opinion that the person alleged to have committed the offense and brought before him as a child, he shall, word shall, just uh, uh, look at it without any delay, record such opinion, shall record such opinion, and forward the child immediately along with the record of such proceedings to the board having jurisdiction. Well, such opinion is formed from the parents of the offender, which we think when we sit as magistrates, that appearance is not that big a matter and we need a paper. No, 
we as magistrates need to focus on the fact that if he is even appearing as somebody of tender age, we need to get into action. So such opinion is formed from the appearance of the offender when produced before the magistrate or any other supporting document with regard to age produced by the IO. And even if there's no document, court can ask for the same. Well, it is entirely magistrate's wisdom to take a call in this regard. So we all need to be vigilant and sensitive when offender appears to be of tender age. As mandate of the law, the person should immediately be forwarded to the JJB after recording such opinion. I hope I'm clear about section nine clause one. Well, let's come to second scenario. When a person claims to be a juvenile before a court or court itself is of such opinion, the said court shall, again, the word shall, make an inquiry, take such evidence as may be necessary to determine the age of such person and shall record a finding on the matter, stating the age of the person as nearly as may be. Such a claim may be raised before any court and it shall be recognized at any stage, even after final disposal of the case. Well, section nine, clause three further talks about the inquiry, like after the inquiry, if the court finds that a person has com committed an offense and was a child on the date of commission of such offense, it shall forward the child to the board for passing appropriate orders. The sentence, if any passed by the court, shall be deemed to have no effect. Well, interestingly, in many cases, such claim is raised after the conviction or at later stages of the trial. Our courts have faced the situations where claim of juvenility is raised at a belated stage putting them in the state of dilemma and calling for examining the authenticity of the documents relied upon years after the commencement and conclusion of the trial. Friends, laws with regard to juvenile is very much in place in developed nations. Maybe they are not facing that situation. Claim of juvenility is raised at the very initial stage on the basis of a documentary proof there. Records would show it all as there is proper registration of births and deaths in these countries. Such issues only come into picture in such countries when the case involves an immigrant or a refugee, otherwise who's not born in that nation. Well, coming to the scenario in developing nation, like third world countries like ours, system of registration of birth and death is still not streamlined properly. Though there are provisions in the Juvenile Act mentioning the hierarchy of documents to be relied upon to ascertain the age of the person, claiming himself herself to be a juvenile, Still, it becomes quite challenging at times. Children's ability to benefit from legislation made in the countries is further limited by low rates of birth registration. You would be stunned to know that there is only 64% for Sudan, low rates of birth registration, and 29.5% for Pakistan, which makes it difficult for juvenile offenders to prove their age at the time of the crime. Well, good news is India is still better. Well, let's come to section 94. Uh, it talks about presumption and determination of age. We discussed section nine. I told you the two scenarios. Now coming to section 94, it talks about considering a person less than 18 years of age on the basis of appearance only when it is obvious to the committee or the board based on the appearance of the person brought before it under any of the provisions of this act that the said person is a child, the committee or the board shall record such observations stating the age of the child as nearly as may be and proceed with the inquiry. So first uh, uh, clause talks about the appearance again. Merely on the appearance of the person brought before it, the board or the committee shall record such observation and proceed with the inquiry. Let's understand the intention of the legislation behind it. The intention of the legislation is to deal with the issue at the onset to avoid any future complexity or claim with regard to the age. We are still not doing it. Why? We need to be sensitive towards the uh, provision. We don't understand the consequences. Our one thing which we, our one duty, if we don't do it, it has a lot of repercussions in somebody's life. Well, presiding officer should record an observation or can, can even again ask for a document from the IO in regard to the age for the same. If he has doubts about the age, next scenario is covered under section 94 clause 2. It says, in case the committee or the board has reasonable grounds for doubt regarding whether the person brought before it is a child or not, the committee or the board 
shall undertake the process of age determination by seeking evidence by obtaining number 1 this is very important date of birth certificate from the school or the matriculation or equivalent certificate from the concerned examination board if available and in the absence thereof number 2 the birth certificate given by a corporation or a municipal authority or a panchayat so it comes second and number 3 only in the absence of first and second age shall be determined by an ossification test or any other latest medical age determination test conducted on the orders of the committee of the board well such test is to be conducted within 15 days from the date of such order well we are far away from the reality but we can strive for better every day uh, let me tell you that the age recorded by the committee or the board to be the age of person so brought before it shall for the purpose of this act is deemed to be the age, true age of that person so it's final it is again the intention of the legislature to put the age controversy at rest for times to come and to avoid false future claims the plea or the claim with regard to juvenility is generally raised under following circumstances if reliance is placed on any document at any stage reflecting the date of birth delayed claims raised after years due to oblivion to take the benefit of the existing provisions retrospectively when authenticity of the document relied upon is under challenge so this was all about the legislation and the law in place let's come to some of the judgments which have further elaborated the law well let's start from our own high court uh, in the case rekha devi versus sunil and another honorable ms justice jeshri thakur has given a very elaborated judgment where she has discussed the uh, entire law the point of law discussed in this uh, case is that how to determine the age of juvenile juvenile in conflict with law and whether an inquiry ought to be conducted in case there are two certificates available reflecting different date of births the punjab and haryana high court held that whenever a claim of juvenility is raised before any court or a court is of the opinion that an accused person was a juvenile on the date of commission of the offence the court shall make an inquiry as i mentioned earlier take such evidence as may be necessary so as to determine the age of such person and shall record a finding well the issue pertaining to age determination of a child or a juvenile in conflict with law is no longer res integra and in, it means it is no more unsettled it is very much in place in this case there were two documents in the pre, uh, in uh, uh, the birth certificate and the matriculation certificate the birth certificate as issued by the registrar birth and death reflected the date of birth to be december 96 whereas the matriculation certificate would reflect that he is younger by 2 years with a date of birth reflected as january 98 so there was a difference of 2 years both these certificates were at variance with each other a birth certificate issued by the registrar we know is an official document which is admissible in evidence under section 35 of the evidence act it is a public document prepared by a public servant in discharge of his official duty and presumption of correctness is attached to it and heavy onus lies on a party who disputes the presumption it was held that the fact that the birth of petitioner was registered immediately after he was born that is within a period of 7 days of his birth cannot be ignored well it was further held if there is a clear and unambiguous case in favor of the juvenile accused that he was a minor below the age of 18 years on the date of the incident and the documentary evidence at least prima facie proves the same he would be entitled to the special protection under the jj act however if there is an there is any doubt or a contradictory stand is being taken by the accused which raises a doubt on the correctness of the date of birth then an inquiry for determination of the age of the accused is permissible which was also done in the present case as such it was held that the birth certificate is clearly at variance with the matriculation certificate issued and should not be ignored especially when the birth was registered with the authorities within 7 days so it was the circumstance which the court took notice of 
Uh, it further held that it is also a well-known fact that parents of, at the time of getting admission of the children do have a tendency to get a lesser age registered in order for the children to get a longer length of service or other benefits. Since prima facie, a doubt was created in the mind of the court regarding the correctness of date of birth recorded in the matriculation certificate, the impugned orders were set aside, the matter was remanded back to the JJB to hold an inquiry and verify the basis as to how the date of birth came to be reflected in the metric certificate. It was also directed that in case there is still a variation, the matter may be referred to the medical board to determine the age of the accused within a period of three months. The law became very clear in that. Second, in Sanjeev Kumar Gupta, it's a, uh, it's a, a decision by Honorable Apex Court. Sanjeev Kumar Gupta versus State of Uttar Pradesh, 2019 Supreme Court. Well, the point in issue was which document to be relied upon for ascertaining the juvenility when there are two or more documents in existence. It is a judgment authored by Honorable Justice Dr. D.Y. Chandrachud, wherein the credibility and authenticity of matriculation certificate for the purpose of determination of the age came up for consideration. In this said case, JJ Board had rejected the claim of juvenility and Supreme Court confirmed the decision of the JJ Board rejecting the claim of juvenility by setting aside the judgment of the High Court. In this said case, it was observed that the records maintained by the CBSE were purely on the basis of the final list of the students forwarded by the senior secondary school, where the accused therein had studied from class 5 to 10 and not on the basis of any other underlying document. On the other hand, there was a clear and unimpeachable evidence, clear and un unimpeachable so that is very important. Uh, there was another document, date of birth, which had been recorded in the records of another school, which the person had attended till class four, and which was supported by voluntary, voluntary disclosure made by the accused, therein while obtaining both Aadhaar card and driving license. So it was observed that the date of birth reflected in the matriculation certificate could not be accepted as authentic or credible. In section 94 clause 2, clause 1, both the date of certificate from the school as well as the matriculation or equivalent certificate are placed in the same category. So this is the difference between the two acts. The earlier one, which we had uh, in 2000 and uh, rules were uh, two, uh, 2007, seven rules where there was hierarchy, but in this 2015 act, as per section 94, all of these documents from school have been kept under one uh, roof. So, in this case, reliance has also been placed upon Abu Zar Hussain versus State of West Bengal, another case by Honorable Apex Court. It is pertaining to 2012. It is a three bench judge decision. It was observed that the credibility and acceptability of the documents including the school leaving certificate would depend on the facts and circumstances of each case and no hard and fast rule as such could be laid down in that regard. It was observed by Honorable Justice T.S. Thakur as then the learned Chief Justice that directing an inquiry is not the same thing as declaring the accused to be a juvenile. In the former, the court simply records a prima facie conclusion while a declaration is made on the basis of evidence. Hence, the approach at the stage of directing an inquiry has to be more liberal, lest there is miscarriage of justice. The standard of proof required is different for both. In the former, the court simply records the prima facie conclusion. It would eventually depend on how the court evaluates such material for a prima facie conclusion, and the court may or may not direct an inquiry. In the latter, the court makes a declaration on evidence that it scrutinizes and accepts such evidence only if it is worthy of acceptance. We need to understand. We need to understand that it is the evidence which is in front of us, which needs to be scrutinized and uh, properly seen. Well, another case, Ashwani Kumar Saxena versus State of Madhya Pradesh, again, uh, Honorable Apex Court uh, in the year 2012, stated its opinion, saying that there may be situations where, where the entry made in the matriculation or equivalent certificates, date of birth certificate from the school first attended, and even the birth certificate given by a corp corporation or a municipal authority or a panchayat may not be correct. 
but court juvenile justice board or a committee functioning under the jj act is not expected to conduct such a roving inquiry and to go behind those certificates to examine the correctness of those documents kept during the normal course of business only in cases this is important only in cases where those documents or certificates are found to be fabricated or manipulated the court the juvenile justice board or the committee need to go for medical report for age determination well in arnit das another case versus state of bihar 2000 again by honorable supreme court wherein it was observed that while considering the when considering the question as to determination of the age of an accused for the purpose of ascertaining whether he is a juvenile or not a hyper technical approach should not be adopted while appreciating the evidence evidence adduced in support of the plea that he was a juvenile and if two views may be possible the court should lean in favor of holding the accused to be a juvenile in borderline cases this is because the act being a welfare legislation court should be zealous to see that a juvenile derives full benefits of the provisions of the act but this is again very important for all of us but at the same time it is also imperative for the courts to ensure that the protection and privileges under the act are not misused by unscrupulous persons to escape punishment for having committed serious heinous offenses uh, another case jitendra ram versus state of jharkhand 2006 again honorable supreme court had sounded a note of caution on the earlier observ- observation made by in the case of bhola bhagat and others versus state of bihar 1997 well i'll just tell you the crux because we need to uh, wind up each plea must be judged on its own merit each case has to be considered on the basis of the materials brought on records when a plea is raised on behalf of an accused that he was a child within the meaning of the definition of the expression under the act it becomes obligatory for the court in case it entertains any doubt in case it entertains any doubt if there is no prima facie evidence that is important if it entertains any doubt about the age as claimed by the accused to hold an inquiry itself for determination of the question of age of the accused or cause an inquiry to be held and seek a report regarding the same if necessary by asking the parties to lead evidence in this regard well uh, again in jabbar singh versus dinesh and another 2010 again honorable supreme court considered the situation where the entry of date of birth in the admission form of the school records or transfer certificates did not satisfy the condition laid down under section 35 of the evidence act since it was not an entry of uh, made by in any public or official register and was not made by a public servant in discharge of its official duty in the aforesaid case supreme court set aside the order of the high court in revision and confirmed the order of the trial court holding that the accused therein was a juvenile at the time of the commission of the alleged offence uh, another case parag bharti this is a very famous case versus state of uttar pradesh in another 2016 supreme court the same thing was reiterated it is no doubt uh, it is no doubt true that there is a clear and unambiguous case in favor of the juvenile so if it if it's a clear and unambiguous case in favor of the juvenile uh he was declared to be a minor and was declared that he's uh, below the age of 18 years uh, it was made clear that for the purpose of juvenile justice act uh, it is not the act which should give shelter to the accused for grave and heinous offenses that was also held in the same uh, case it is settled proposition of law that uh, if the matriculation or equivalent certificates are available the, and there is no other material to prove the correctness of date of birth the date of birth mentioned in the matriculation certificate has to be treated as a conclusive proof of the date of birth it was also held that however if there is any doubt or a contradictory stand is being taken by the accused which raises a doubt on the correctness of the date of birth then as laid down by this by the honorable court in abu zar hussain an inquiry for determination of the age of the accused is permissible which has been which was also done in parag bharti's case Let's come to the latest case law on the subject. Recently, Rishi Pal Solanki versus State of Uttar Pradesh and others. It was decided on 18th November 2021, just the last month. Two judges bench, Justice Nagratna and Justice Chandrachur again. Um, judgment was authored by Justice Nagratna. 
All the references we just discussed have been referred by the Honorable Supreme Court in this case. Well, admittedly, there was no other document in this case indicating the date of birth of the juvenile, contrary to what was indicated in the matriculation certificate. No contra evidence to the documents produced by the juvenile was produced. In the circumstances, Supreme Court held that they are they were not inclined to differ from the order of the High Court, which had sustained the judgment of the District and Session Court as well as as well as of the JJ Board. In this case, declaring the person juvenile on the basis of matriculation certificate. The case of Sanjeev Kumar, which we just discussed, like at the very first instance, was also discussed in this, and it was observed that it differentiated on facts of Rishi Pal's case. I'll tell you how. You cannot just go on with a flow that uh, in one case matric certificate has been uh, held to be a genuine document. You have to see uh, the document uh, case to case. In Sanjeev Kumar Gupta's case. the high court had reversed the findings of the session judge on the basis of the matriculation certificate by holding the said certificate would have precedence over any other document the same was reversed by the honorable supreme court as the aadhar card voter id and age standard mark sheet indicated the date of birth of the person uh, as uh, december 95 whereas matriculation certificate indicated the date of birth as december 98 and according to the medical report it was opined that the person was 19 years of age on uh, in 11, uh, on 9th uh, november 2016 when the alleged offenses were uh, offenses were said to have been committed by him in the said case but in rishi pal's case admittedly there was no other document apart from metric certificate indicating the date of birth of person contrary to what has been indicated uh, in the metric certificate thus such a dis discrepancy in the date of birth does not arise herein it was held and no contra evidence to the documents produced uh, was produced against that document as such order of the high court was upheld which sustained the judgment of the district and session court as i mentioned as well as the jjb board well this was all about the documents first and second let's quickly come to the ossification test what is the uh, uh, what is the extent of relevance of ossification test well section 94 clause 2 Uh, sub clause 3 talks about it only in the absence of 1 and 2 like where there is no document age shall be determined by an ossification test or any other latest medical age determination test conducted on the orders of the committee of the board in bablu pasi versus state of jharkhand and another it's a, a judgment from the year 2008 by honorable supreme court it was observed that it is well settled that it is neither feasible nor desirable to lay down an abstract formula to determine the age of a person the date of birth is to be determined on the basis of material on record and on appreciation of evidence adduced by the parties the medical evidence as to the age of a person though a very useful guiding factor is not is not conclusive and has to be considered along with other cogent evidence Similarly, in state of Madhya Pradesh versus Anup Singh, it was observed that the ossification test is not the sole criterion for determination of date of birth when birth certificate and middle school certificate are not uh, are available. Well, in this case, it was observed that the High Court was not right in presuming that the prosecutrice therein was more than 18 years of age at the time of the incident on the basis of ossification test report. There was a difference of two days in the date of birth mentioned in the birth certificate. and the middle school certificate but the same was held to be a minor discrepancy in that case it was held that prosecutrix was below 16 years of age at the date of the incident and set aside the judgment passed by the high court well similarly in mukarrab versus state of up decided in the year 2017 bench of justice banumati and justice sikri it was held that the courts have observed that the evidence afforded by radiological examination is a useful guiding force factor for determining the age of person but the evidence is not of a conclusive and incontrovertible nature and is subject to a margin of error medical evidence as to the age of a person though a very use useful guiding factor is not conclusive and has to be considered along with other circumstances it was further held this is very important it was further held that the ossification test cannot be regarded as conclusive when the appellants have crossed the age of 30 years like after a certain age you cannot uh, consider it also which is an important factor to be taken into account as age cannot be determined with precision after a certain age in arjun pandit rao 
versus Kailash Kushan Rao, again Supreme Court 2020, last year, held in the context of certificate required under Section 65B of the Evidence Act, that as per the Latin maxim, lex non cogit ed impossibilia, law does not demand the impossible. Thus, when the ossification test cannot yield trustworthy and reliable results, such tests cannot be made up basis to determine the age of the person concerned on the date of incident. Therefore, in the absence of any reliable, trustworthy medical evidence to find out age of the appellant, the ossification test conducted in year 2020, when the appellant was 55 years of age, cannot be conclusive to declare him as a juvenile on the date of the incident. Well, friends, in light of, light of these discrepancies, the question arises as to what could be an appropriate solution to this problem. This is where we enter the realm of forensic dentistry, which is currently used by U.S. Immigration Department of Age Determination. It is noteworthy that Section 94, Clause 2, sub clause 3 of the JJ Act, does use the phrase ossification test, best part, after the new act has come into force, or any other latest medical age determination test conducted on the orders of the committee or the board. So they have kept it open. However, presently in India, no other method of age determination is used apart from the ossification test for the purposes of the JJ Act. Such a practice goes, goes against the very spirit of the section. Let's try and explore new methods whenever it is indispensable. Well, lastly, in the judgment rendered by Honorable Justice Hemant Gupta, in Ram Vijay Singh versus State of Uttar Pradesh, again the same year, August 2021, it was observed that the ossification test is not the sole criterion as we just um, discussed. And a blind and mechanical view regarding the age of the person cannot be adopted solely on the basis of medical opinion by radiological examination. Though radiological examinations are useful guiding factor for determining the, determining the age of a person, the evidence is not a conclusive and incontrovertible nature and is, it is subject to a margin of error. It was held in the same case that as per scheme of the act, when it is obvious, so now let's have a crux of the entire law. It was given in this case. The first attempt to determine the age is by assessing the physical appearance of the person when brought before the board or the committee. It is only in case of doubt the process of age determination by seeking evidence becomes necessary. First is physical appearance. Second, if there's a doubt, then the age determination process and evidence has to happen. At the stage when a person is around 18 years of age, the ossification test, only if it, he's around 18 years of age, ossification test can be said to be relevant for determining, determining the approximate age of a person in conflict with law. However, when the person is around 40, between 40 and 55 years of age, the structure of bones cannot be helpful in determining the age. Well, summary of the position prevailing in regard of claim of juvenility. Let's have a quick summary. Claim of juvenility may be raised at any stage, even after final disposal of the case. For making a claim with regard to juvenility after conviction, the claimant must produce some material which may prime of shy satisfy the court that an inquiry into the claim of juvenility is necessary. Initial burden has to be discharged by the person who claims it. An affidavit of the claimant or any of the parents or a sibling or a relative in support of the claim of juvenility raised for the first time in appeal or revision or before the Honorable Supreme Court during the pendency of the matter or after disposal of the case shall not be sufficient justifying an inquiry to determine the age of such person. The court where the plea of juvenility is raised for the first time should always be guided by the objectives of the act and be alive to the position that the beneficent and salutary provisions contained in the act are not defeated by hyper-technical approach and the persons who are entitled to get benefits of that get such benefits. Claim of juvenility, lacking in credibility or frivolous claim of juvenility or patently absurd or inherently improbable claim of juvenility must be rejected by the court at threshold whenever raised. Well, there's a lot to be told, but I'll sum up. I know you people, everybody, each of us have been sitting all day. Let me tell you, what is the impact of successful contest of juvenility after the conviction? A claim when succeed after conclusion of the trial can have grave impact at various fronts. It is as neglectful as illegally imprisoning a person which in consequence breeds bitterness and we all towards the system and the society. 
it further culminates into the failure of the system it depicts the total failure of the machinery and the system having least concern for the life and liberty of a person as a consequence it is promoted widely as failure in the press and inadvertently advertises the fact that proven juvenility can be a last minute safety net for a defense case don't let that happen then it has horrid psychological effect on the accused it hardens the person it amounts to injustice it is waste of time and resources it is traumatic for the family who's actually facing it on everyday basis and it weakens our judicial system the simple fact is that any juvenile brought before the court should have had prior confirmation prior age confirmation failure to do this and proceed with the case without this prior confirmation is negligent and weakens the system let let's have some suggestions or practices which can actually streamline the system and make it potent we can think of it and all the stakeholders here can think of it uh, since we have a special juvenile police unit also and have we have people from all the streams today well charge sheet and final report should include age confirmation police can play a very important part right at the time of apprehension of any person it should be made a mandate to ascertain the age and collect the document in that regard it is going to save lot of time and energy prosecution may ascertain the authenticity of documents we can ask the prosecution and da before forwarding the chalan of final report the prosecution must verify the record including documents depicting the date of birth of the accused well then we can have defense in picture to accept at the very beginning to accept and counter the said document before the trial it can also further save lot of energy a lot of time when we have role of presiding officers in the act of 2015 section 94 makes it amply clear the documents to be relied upon to ascertain the age of the person claiming to be juvenile well judges need to be sensitive we all need to be sensitive and watchful and ask the prosecution to put forth a document regard to the age of any such accused at very initial stage the case must not commence until this basic has been established and we can also think of penalizing deliberate false claims and uh, section 94 clause 3 also talks about finality to the claim proceedings that uh, which provides that the age recorded by the committee of the board to be age of person so brought before it uh, to be deemed to be the true age of that person there should be no occasion for the accused to raise the plea of juvenility relying upon the same document once the same stands decided well i'll quickly tell you about my experience when i was posted as principal magistrate juvenile justice board sonipat we got a survey conducted at special home well juveniles were asked to fill a questionnaire wherein they were asked to answer several questions pertaining to their background as well as circumstances which led them in they were also asked about their state of mind in the special home and what they plan to do after moving out of there well the study would show that most of them feel depressed and were not so hopeful about their futures the future the questionnaire was filled by 65 inmates serving sentence at special home sonipat study had lot to show i cannot discuss it here but i can always tell you that unfortunately due to delay in proceedings most of the juvenile had crossed the age of 18 12.3% were married and some of them even had kids what a scenario friends there is a need to sensitize each and every quarter concerned to do their bit so as to achieve the solemn objective of juvenile justice act well this two days workshop for all of us involved is definitely a step forward in this direction we all should be thankful to the juvenile justice committee uh, honorable high court and chandigarh judicial academy for this well we have laws policies and institutions in place to protect the rights of the child we use billions of rupees and thousands of people devoting their lives to protecting children around the world and the country however we are benighted when it comes to identifying the most important issue when is a child a child as rightly said children are the world's most valuable source and its best hope for the future let's keep this hope alive to have a vibrant future thank you so very much thank you for being so patient and uh, we'll meet tomorrow uh, with the next uh, sessions and vibrant ones hope to see you tomorrow thank you so very much